Hello everyone and welcome to a realism overhaul project I've been working on. This is a methane and oxygen shuttle and it has numerous interesting features that make it superior to the original STS space shuttle and mainly it's uh, the fact that all of it is reusable. There's no expendable external tank that we have to leave behind and I'll go through all the features one bit at a time, but the main point is that all of the engines involved use methane and oxygen. And on this side, you might have already guessed what this is. There is no SRB involved. This is a methane and oxygen booster, and in fact, it is the first stage of New Glenn from Blue Origin. And so the engines at the bottom here are BE4s. They're configured appropriately, even though uh, it, the model is wrong and the default configuration is Raptor sea level. This is the BE4 configuration with these numbers. Uh, the numbers might be better than this, but they're certainly not worse than the numbers that I've put here. And that has five ignitions. And we're going to need to shut off some of these engines uh, during the flight because this gets relatively light compared to the shuttle itself. In order to remove the external tank, we had to pack a lot of fuel in the shuttle, which has other benefits. It means that if we refuel the shuttle in space, it can get pretty far. In fact, it could easily do a moon trip and back. It could even do a Mars trip. And so, and of course, if you have some sort of refueling facility around Mars that can handle methane and oxygen, it can refuel at Mars. So it's got a lot of benefits. Rather than using BE-4s on the shuttle, I'm using SpaceX engines. So there's sort of a SpaceX Blue Origin collaboration. And so we've got a Raptor vacuum in the center and then Raptor sea level engines on the sides. And that that ensures that we get the best ISP in vacuum while having a lot of liftoff thrust. So we'll only use the sea level ones when we lift off, but eventually later into the flight we'll just be using the vacuum engine. So that's the configuration there. And of course all this is reusable because presumably uh, SpaceX has designed the Raptor engines to be very reusable and easily, easily refurbishable if you will. And of course they have a lot of restarts. And same goes for the New Glenn. The New Glenn is supposed to be a reusable launcher. It's supposed to land on a barge, as far as I know. And I'm reserving fuel for that, by the way. Uh, there's a locked tank at the bottom with low utilization to make sure that's the right proportion. And so it's reserving about, I think, between 8 and 10% of the total fuel for the landing, which is a lot. Uh, that's a lot to reserve. But I think it'll work out. Our thrust weight ratio is relatively low compared to the original shuttle, which of course had two saw rocket boosters and hydrogen and oxygen, which is technically more efficient, but not dense enough. You can't pack enough of uh, hydrogen and oxygen inside the shuttle to, you know, make it work like this. We have to use methane and oxygen, which is denser fuels, which are denser propellants, we'll say, and that makes it work. Now. I mentioned shutting off the engines in order to maintain the balance because the shuttle will be relatively heavy. Uh, and the problem is we have to keep running the shuttle, all the shuttle's engines be, uh, in order to maintain the balance. And when we do that, the shuttle starts using a lot more of its own fuel and the, blue, uh, the New Glenn uses less, such that the New Glenn ends up going to orbit with us. So I've had to do something. There's no easy way of avoiding that. I tried. I tried various things. And the only way I could figure out how to avoid this and to ensure that the new Glenn would end up being able to land on a barge is to feed fuel from new Glenn into the shuttle. So that is a system that would need to be developed. Um, Otherwise, we're already expecting that SpaceX is going to develop these engines, uh, Blue Origin is developing these engines and, in the, and the entire booster, uh, but the fuel crossfeed system is a complication. Uh, it's possible that you could have uh, like an independent tank on top for the shuttle and just have that, we'd have a pipe down. You've seen boosters with a pipe down and then a linkage down here. Uh, you wouldn't want to have the pipe go uh, uh, the linkage up here and then build the pipe into the shuttle that'd be too complicated for the shuttle it'd be better to do it on the booster but uh, that that's that's a caveat I've also added RCS thrusters burning methane and oxygen in, in order to potentially do a landing with this but not in this episode so 
Yeah. Another thing that I haven't tried out is whether this... Well, I have tried it out and it wasn't successful. Um, bringing this back down through the atmosphere, it's uh, had thermal issues. So we'll have to work on that. I have no idea whether the SpaceX Pika X, the thing that they use on their heat shields for the Dragon spacecraft, could be used on the bottom of a shuttle or not. Uh, but yeah, I have no idea. It's a good question. So yeah, there are developments that need to be handled. But for now, we are just going to try and launch it and we'll see its operations. It's about the same mass of, as the real space shuttle, the STS, I mean, not uh, Buran. Buran is much more interesting. Oh, uh, speaking of Buran, of course, Buran used kerosene and oxygen on the on the boosters. Li uh, it's still liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen for the main engines, though the main engines were on the external tank, uh, the energy uh, core part. And But the kerosene and oxygen boosters, I thought of that. I thought of maybe launching this shuttle with two or three uh, Falcon 9 first stages, and those are kerosene and oxygen. But they don't provide enough total impulse, they don't have enough fuel times ISP, if you will, uh, to actually do the trick. At least I don't think so. The trouble is, uh, you'll note that we're not really getting the right stats in, in MechJeb. The fuel feed system is so complicated that MechJeb is just not telling us the truth. So maybe, maybe two or three Falcon 9s would have done the trick too. But we're going to try this out. All right, so on that note, I am going to take this out to the launch pad and we'll see it in operation. It's a bit wiggly though, I have to warn you. We did lock the control surfaces, but it's still wiggly. Okay, here we go. All right, so here we are. It is possible that it'd be better if I move the shuttle lower. I think that would be a better thing. I think the shuttle is mounted too high. It would probably save us a lot of the wiggles that we're going to see if the shuttle was simply mounted lower. You'll note that I'm not oriented so that I have to do a roll maneuver. That'll make things simpler, but it still wiggles a bit. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on. Uh, get some distance. Ignition. And launch. I named it New Young in honor of uh, John Young, who of course was the first shuttle commander. And that's in keeping with the Blue Origin naming convention. They have New Shepard, New Glenn, and so the first person who pioneered the shuttle was, uh, I figure, John Young. So we're going like that. Okay, here we go. We're now high enough that the ISP of the vacuum engine should be fine, so I'm going to ignite it. Okay, going well. Almost 2.5 Gs now. That's what it looks like from this view. Uh, let's not push the maneuvers. I feel like I should switch off two of the engines on the new Glen. So off they go. This is the wiggly part. As I have to figure out when the new Glen engines need to be cut, I think I'll just go. We now only have one engine on the new Glen. Ah, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, maybe four. I should turn four off initially instead of uh, rushing it like that. Right now, the new Glen only has one engine on. The shell has all five. RCS on and set. Okay, New Glenn is off. It did reserve the fuel. We had locked fuel there. We've got some wigglies on the side pods. I do have them strutted. I don't know why they occasionally have problems. Let's throttle down. Uh, that does not seem to help. So I get this problem sometimes. Yes, I do have Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. 
No, it does not seem to be helping. I tested this. It had worked. Well, let's see. Maybe I can uh, launch again and do better, maybe? Now, you might think it's the engine gimbling, but uh, even at launch, you can see, for some reason, the engine pods do a little bit of a dance. Uh, it's strange because I tested the, the shuttle horizontally, and it doesn't do that when you're horizontal. Uh, it, it is also all very strutted. There is some clipping involved, unfortunately. Um, though that shouldn't uh, change the fact that tanks of the volume that we see here would easily be able to uh, carry the fuel required. So that's not a problem, especially if they're Super SpaceX tanks. But anyway, throttle up, SAS is on. Let's try this one more time. And this time I'll make sure to turn off the engines properly on the new Glenn. But if we have that glitch, I don't know what else to do about it. Anyway, work in progress, folks. Ignition. And launch. Altogether, the main complication is the cross-feeding. I mean, when you think about it, the shuttle ends up with more than 6,000 meters per second of Delta V uh, with its payload, with a payload of 23 tons in the bay. And a crew capacity of eight. Six thousand meters per second of delta V is definitely enough to go to the moon, make orbits, and then come back. Uh, though you'd have to have, uh, you could actually use some of the residual delta V. You'd have more than necessary for that part. Uh, you'd have enough delta V to slow down a bit on the Earth side, but you'd still need some pretty good heat shielding to really come back down. Okay, four engines out on the New Glen, so three engines left. Okay, two more engines out on the New Glen. Oop, a little bit of a jiggle, but at least not as bad as last time. Only one engine left. And set. Ah. Uh... Oh, we got the jiggles early this time. We've lost uh, two engines on this side. And that wing. It wasn't a collision. It was the jiggles that we saw last time. Okay, well... hmm. So we've got this problem. Now I could re uh, remove the Mark II parts and try and put some sort of procedural tank there. It won't look as good because, you know, this has a nice smooth look to it. But, you know, at least we wouldn't have ridiculous glitching. Let me restart the program and try it one more time. And after that, I guess I'll have to proceed with a redesign. Uh, that's a lot of shaking. A lot of shaking going on there. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on. Maybe if they didn't clip the wings at least, that would be good. Anyway, some more experimentation may be necessary to make this work safely. But for now, ignition. And launch. Worth noting that it, uh, it's hands-free right now, it's just SAS holding it. I am not uh, manually controlling it in any way off of the launch pad. You can see the Delta V reading when we launch is very different from what it shows in the VAB. Which is part of the problem when uh, trying to figure out which system would work best. Now if we did use the Falcon 9s, that would cause a problem. A, we wouldn't be able to cross feed uh, because it's kerosene and oxygen on the Falcon 9s. Um, but as far as the balance goes, that could be a problem too. Maybe there's a thing where if I get past a certain altitude, it won't 
wig out on me? I don't know. Maybe I should go higher in pitch. Maybe lower in pitch to worse it'll be. It's tough to say. I'm just wondering if it's fair mirror space and the fact that these might have some lift that causes some sort of issue. You can see some wiggliness starting. Maybe if I, you know, throwing down doesn't seem to help too much. Okay, separating off. I'm throwing down in the hope that it'll settle them down. But it doesn't seem to. They're, uh, they... They just... See, I can shut down the engine. And they're just doing their own thing. I don't even know why the... the this, this green tank is the... Hmm... That's the payload. And it's a procedural parts tank. Maybe it's bumping into them. Maybe if I make it thinner, this wouldn't be a problem. Let's try that as a theory. Maybe it, because they're sort of inside the cargo bay, they're impinging on the cargo bay, maybe they're interfering with that tank. Yeah, that's a possibility. Well, I mean, first of all, I wish it would obey my deploy limit thing. Oops, I did not want to pick that up. I wonder if there's something weird about the cargo bay and maybe it's not such a good idea to have them bump into it at all. Could be just general glitchiness. But let's make this thinner. Less in di uh, yep, okay. Make it, let's say, 3.5. That seems to clear everything. And we'll increase the utilization to make sure it's still the same mass. And why don't we add some struts to it, for safety's sake. Okay, well, well, there were still some wiggles on those Mark II tanks on bringing it out to launch pad, so I'm not entirely sure we're, we're through with the problems. Uh, let me check. Okay, that's locked. Cargo bay. Why don't we open the cargo bay and see how everything's inside. Okay, lock tank, which seems to be clear of those Mark II ones. So one thing, one thing will be the case. It's not that tank's fault if uh, things go badly. We'll try and go steeper this time. Maybe that'll help. Who knows? Okay, ignition and launch. Now, if I had some sort of way of differential throttling, we wouldn't have to shut the engines down the way we do on the new Glen. But currently, even though I thought I had a way to control the engines separately, it doesn't seem to be working quite right. Okay, vacuum engine ignition. Okay, shut down. Of four engines on the new Glen. Okay, shut down of two more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, why did it do it? What? That's strange. That's exactly what happened before. Let's separate that off. We can already see the jiggles are starting again. Maybe if I shut down two of the engines here? No, that just makes things even worse. Nope. So I've got sort of a Kraken... Kraken shuttle thing going here. Well, this is a highly advanced technology, the latest in shuttle designs, and I guess it's not going to be easy. My my first impulse is going to be replacing those Mark II pods with, with just procedural tanks, even though it's not going to look quite as good. 
or uh, maybe moving them out away from the cargo bay. But a lot of testing will be necessary. A lot of pain and uh, disappointment, I'm sure. But this is where we're at, folks. And I hope uh, you will look forward to seeing the shuttle in proper operation in the future. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.